Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome to the Kerbal Space Program Test Pilot Season 2. To start off with, we have got something that I definitely think does the new series justice. This is the Water Strider, submitted by Wimex84. Thank you very much for the submission. And here we go, the HFP3 Water Strider, with 104 parts and one stage. Let us see just how good viewers are at submitting ships. I need to think of a new a new intro kind of phrase thing. Oh, bloody. <laughs> this is big. Wow. Take a look at this, man. I, I, of course, as per the entry rules, I've seen a screenshot of this. But this is different to what it looked like. This is intimidating, man. Let's get a look, good look at this. So, in fact, let's put the brakes on, there we go. So the new series is going to be based, or the new season, is going to be based more on reviewing and less on editing and changing and things. So we're going to determine just how good my viewer base is at creating ships. This has got seven engines of the high atmosphere variety. Um, gotta wonder why that is, why not use the lower atmosphere one, seeing as this isn't exactly going to fly. Although, although we probably will try that. We might as well, come on. It has got those uh, four high lift, high lift um, to surface area ratio wings. Um, very unstable things, we'll have to see how they, they affect the flight. Or indeed not the flight of this. Got various flaps around using the new the new uh, the new delta wings, aren't they called? I'm not entirely sure. But the overall effect of this is just a massive spider. <laughs> Stride the spider, that's what I'm gonna call it. Okay, let's see how this thing actually copes under test conditions. So, start up the engines and full throttle. Let's see oh, brakes are on. Okay. <laughs> what happens if you go on full throttle with no brakes? Uh, not an awful lot. It seems to be pretty sturdy. Uh, it's definitely got some sort of integrity on its side. Steering, pretty responsive until that happens. <laughs> wow. Okay, so this is intended for the water, I will point out. It is not a limiting factor that my incompetent um, driving skills affect it. Let's restart the flight, take a look at this again. Hopefully we'll actually get it into the water fairly quickly. There we go. Jebediah Kerman as our willing test pilot, as always. <laughs> we have four, four ram air intakes, one for each of these front engines. And then we have four radial engines uh, for the three back ones, presumably. Although they are they are shared universally. Let's go at just over a third throttle, and let's get into the water. Here we go. So, what else can we comment on? Um, good use of struts. I've got to say that for in terms of integrity, I think he's done a really well job. A really really good job. Can't really see an awful lot of swaying. And apart from that, okay, slow down, Harvey. <laughs> oh no, don't do that. No, no, okay. Getting this thing into the water. If I wasn't absolutely terrible, getting this thing into the water may be, may be harder than it looks. <laughs> perhaps we need to develop some sort of delivery system that could perhaps be an improvement. I could, I can imagine, just like a very wide platform and uh, this thing is on top of it and that and then it detaches and it just kind of drives away from above it. Okay. We'll just speed up to I think we spun out about ninety meters per second, which is ridiculously fast. So we'll go up to around fifty and then we'll just coast into the ocean. See how well this thing can handle. There we go. Engines off. And we'll just I don't know, let let's see how well it deals with physics acceleration. Ooh not that well, I don't think. The the massive altitude this thing sits at makes it very, very good for going off of the edge of runways and things. Um, absolutely. But uh, physics acceleration does not seem to be one of its best qualities. There we are, speeding back up. 
Let's have a look at our resources. How much fuel does this thing have? 2,100 liquid fuel, because of course there's no oxidizer. These are all atmospheric breathing engines. So that is, that is a great distance. Depending on how well this thing travels in the water, uh, it has definitely got enough fuel for the, drop, for the job, I think. Okay. And it uh, seems to be no... Steering is a bit less responsive now we're on uneven ground. Or maybe that's just because I'm using fine control. I do like using fine control. I think, I think I do not fly any missions without flying control on. Not entirely sure why, but hey, it works. Okay, bringing this in. We'll do a little bit of braking just so we don't enter the water too quickly. And we'll take this on its first proper test. There we go. Slow things down a little more. And we should be okay now just to coast in. Let's have a look at this. Oh, nothing broken so far. So I wonder what the impact tolerance of those, of those uh, wings are then. It must be pretty high. That's probably why this thing was chosen. Uh, the profile is, as you can tell, slim in the main body, but it's lifted high away from the water. So I think we'll be able to take this at a decent speed without actually damaging much. It'll definitely be these winglet flaps at the front or the gear that goes first. I'm not entirely sure about the wings. Um, in terms of steering, whilst this is things just in the water, it turns reasonably well. I mean, obviously when you've got the engines on, you've got the gimballing, the uh, the thrust vectoring of those engines allowing you to move around. We'll, we'll head off to the second island and we'll see about... We'll see just how fast this thing can go. Actually, if we... Does braking have any effect in water? I somehow doubt it, but... Knowing KSP, I would not be that surprised, to be honest. Let's break. Let's see if this actually does anything. Ah, I don't think it is. No. Okay. Oh, the gear aren't even down. That would probably explain why it's not doing anything, if it could. But nonetheless, if we can, I want to quick save. Can't move... Still moving over surface. Um, perhaps we need some sort of retrograde thrusters on this. So we can slow down completely in the water. It would be nice if the game had mechanics in it. Um, I know the damned robotics pack has exactly what I'm talking about, but we don't use mods. This this series, this this show, is entirely devoid of any mods. It's got to be all stock parts. And um, yeah, I wish the game had some sort of mechanics so you could tilt engines round. Is this slow enough? Nope, still moving over the surface. Two meters per second. 1.9, 1.8, 1 1.7. No, well, we're just going to sit here and cruise. What else can we analyse? Um, in the email that this was submitted with, it said he recommended, uh, the guy recommended adding more flaps to the front to get a better steering. Uh, although that would come at a cost, which is very ominous. Oh, come on, 0.9 meters per second and we can't quick save. Come on, point 0.8. Wow. This thing really does not have an awful lot of tolerance now, does it? Point 0.6. It's got to be point 0.5. It's got to be under point 0.5. Come on, slow down. Point 0.5 or so. Point 0.5. No, no. Wow. I'm, in, I'm actually very surprised. I had imagined that if you were travelling any less than point 0.5, you'd actually be able to do that. Hmm. Well, whilst we sit here waiting... Presumably it's point 0.2 or 1 or 0 even. Um, what was I talking about? Yes, it said at, an, at a cost, adding more winglets would be at a cost. We can only imagine what that cost would be. Um, just from looking how it handled on that runway over there, on the runway over there, I imagine the cost... There we go, quick saving. I imagine it probably flips out of control if you go too fast. Right, we've quick saved. Good. Now let's hold off, head off towards this island, shall we? We'll see what full throttle does. Ooh, speeding up very quickly. What speed do these wings break at? Ooh. Ooh, wow. This is... This is extremely fast. 135? 140 meters per second? 
145. If we had the low atmosphere engines on this, we would be going probably 200 meters per second. This is incredible. Five out of five for this, man. For capabilities in its natural environment, 146 meters, 146.3 Point four meters per second. This is really, really good. Way faster than anything I expected. I am extremely happy with this. Very nice. I wonder if there is a top speed or whether the engines simply aren't capable of actually breaking the parts. That's good. I would not want to be restricted to not using full throttle. That is, that is extremely good. Well done, Wim86. You get... You get my utter praise. I was, I admit, I was fairly sceptical about its ability to perform. Okay, so how does turning cope? Well, we can turn pretty fast. And it does indeed affect our, our direction of travel pretty well. You can see the prograde marker lags behind slightly, but it's really not that much. Of course, turning has an impact on our speed, but that's to be expected. Um, this for, okay, let's go through the, let's go through the topics. Aesthetically, uh, pff, well, of course it's not really much of a looker, but, um, you know, I think it's a fairly sleek profile and it's hoisted on some pretty epic looking legs, though the combination of those struts is pretty awesome. Um, definitely gives a kind of spider or daddy long legs kind of impression. So aesthetically, I'd give this, what, a 3 or 4 out of 5? It's not beautiful, but I don't think it's intended to be. I don't think it needs to be. Let's say a 4 out of 5. Uh, in terms of performance in its natural habitat, its intended performance, 5 out of 5, 6. 6 out of 5. This is a great way to start the series off. And we're coming up to our island. Now, I want to go round the runway, and I want to try and mount it on. Um, you'll notice the runway is hovering. Uh, in the Challenging challenging YouTubers episode 3, uh, you notice that, many of you in the comments section. That's because my graphic settings aren't, uh, they're on the fastest possible, I believe, or second to fastest or something. Um, so we should be able to go around the back of the runway and mount this thing onto land. So we're currently at 10 out of 10, that's a 4 out of 5 for aesthetics, a 6 out of 5 for performance. Uh, what other categories can we think of, of on the spot? Um, pff, I don't know, is fuel one? I suppose it definitely has the fuel. I mean, we've used 1,646 out of 2,100 so far. So that's, what, barely a fifth? That is pretty... That has definitely got some distance, this thing. The fact they can make it over to this island really easily uh, says says very good things about it. Okay, uh, let's try and bring this in. So I'd say if fuel is actually a worthy category, then it's got 5 out of 5 of fuel. Doesn't really require any more, and adding any more on would be a very simple task, so that's fine. Let's... how quickly does this thing slow down when just coasting? Pretty quickly. Very quickly, in fact. That's pretty good. And we'll keep it on one third throttle. And I think that I think that's pretty much all of it. Entertainment value. Um, well, it doesn't crash and explode, so I suppose we have to knock a point off for of that. So, entertainment, four out of five. Very good mark, I'd say. Okay, let's bring this thing up. Now, can we mount land at a speed? I don't want to risk it. I've opened up the gears. Now we turn off the engines, and we'll see we'll see how this thing copes. We need to be parallel to the shore. Hopefully. Ooh, ooh. Coming up. There we go. Mounted like a pro. Man. That was very good. Look at this. <laughs> Fully amphibious car thing. Ah, oh, very nice. Can we get this thing onto the runway? It's turning on land is extremely slow. I now understand why extra flaps were recommended. Um, perhaps RCS could help there, but from past experience it doesn't really. We need to wait for 1.9, uh, for point 19, when we are going to get dedicated rover parts with actual powerful wheels, uh, power-able wheels and uh, turning, dedicated steering. That will help definitely. I'm actually holding down turn right. 
I'm holding down the D key and nothing is happening. Perhaps there's a slight over-reliance on gimballing or thrust vectoring, I'm not entirely sure. But it's clearly not intended to be on land, but it can definitely mount onto land when needed with no problems. It's a lot of suspension in the struts, I think. Uh, also, of course, on the wheels itself. Well, this is this is it for this first episode of the test pilot. This was the Water Strider submitted by Win Wimex84. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for the submission. This is actually a brilliant craft. A great way to start the series. So, thank you very much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. Thanks again for watching, and I shall see you all next time.